since, unfortunately, the vast majority of people have committed one of these crimes, like I said, either by themselves or with somebody, Chazal said this is an auspicious time to do the tikkunim of the Brit. Why? Because all year we cry to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we don't have enough blessing. We want a bigger house, even though sometimes the house is 10 rooms. We want 11 rooms, we want 15 rooms, we want 100 rooms, even though you only have two, all the kids already are not home, but you want a bigger house, and you want a bigger this, and you want a bigger that. Everybody wants more. That's the reality. The, uh, a person never has uh, enough. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, okay, listen, I want to give you more. Look what I did for Yaakov Avinu, 70 people to hundreds of millions. I want to give it to you. Stop sinning. Why? Because the sins are destroying the bracha. About 250 years ago, we had a Chacham named the Chida, a Rabbi Chida. And his, uh, in his sefer called Tzipor and Shamir, in Siman Vav, Seif Ein, 670 to 74, he writes the following. Wake up the person that violated his Brit. He is destroying a lot. He is hurting a lot. He's hurting every part of his Neshama. You know, you have different parts of your Neshama. He's hurting every one of them. Every one of the parts of the Neshama is getting destroyed. Imagine there is a one of these uh, you know these uh, these ships. They have the, the 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 ropes that they use. They're not like regular ropes you buy from like Home Depot. These ropes need very special skillmen to make these ropes to tie and top a tie and top a tie. They're very very thick. They're very very strong. So no one could just cut it like in the movies. One little knife cuts the rope. It doesn't really work like that in real life. These ropes they use in ships very thick. So imagine that in metal, even stronger. Imagine that connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. All of the shefa, all of the reward, all of the good that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to give you, that comes to the different parts of your neshama, comes through this cord. Now, any time we make a little sin, we like scratch the cord. A little cable, a little tiny thing comes off. So there's a little bit less that we get, a little bit less that we get, a little bit less that we get. You know, you forgot to do that, you let your dime. Ah, a little, little less now. You uh, p- didn't put on tefillin for a week straight. Okay, you got a problem. Ah, oh, you, uh, you forgot, you touched mukse on Shabbat. Okay, you got a little problem. You ate something not kosher. Okay, you got a little problem. But generally, you're still connected. Still connected. You do tshuva, <whistles> returns. The Zohar Kadosh says, the Chida is saying, what is he saying that you're damaging this brit? What is he saying? He's saying, when you waste seed, you simply take a spiritual sword and you cut the whole cord. The whole thing's off. Not small piece. The whole thing's gone. All of the reward that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to give you on Rosh Hashanah when you prayed and you cried your eyes out and you said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I want a baby. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I want a wife. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, I want this. I want that. I want this. I want that. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, my son, my, my dear son, my daughter, my dear. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. Why? You cut the cord. If I give it, it's going to go somewhere else. What is it like? It's like when a pipe breaks. You know, as long as the pipe is connected, the water or whatever is supposed to come to it, the oil, the whatever is supposed to come to it, goes exactly to the destination. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, there's continuous reward going. There's, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. It's not getting to you, though. It's going to other places. Why? You cut the cord. The pipe's everywhere. It's all over the place. It goes to your neighbor. It goes to your enemies. Goes to your ex-wife, goes to your ex-husband, goes to your ex this, goes to everybody else except you. Goes to bills, goes to the IRS, goes to medical, goes to all of the problems in the world. You cannot keep a single dollar in your account. It's coming, a Kadosh Baruch Hu says, but it cannot stay with you. Why? You cut the cord. So the Chida says, this Gamma Brit hurts every part of the Neshama. And in the signature of the king. 
Meaning, it's a personal offense to the king of kings. Upogem b'sharshe nefesh ruach neshama lemala. And he's also hurting the part of the soul that's still in Shemaim. The one that, whatever is here is over there. He says, even the one that's over there, the perfect soul that's up there, that other part, this is Kabbalistic stuff, don't ask me questions about this. This stuff, the part that's over there, even that's getting hurt every time. You're killing yourself. He says, on this sin, HaKadosh Baruch Hu hates this sin so much, he killed Er Ve'onan, the two children of Yehuda, who was Kodesh Kodeshim Yehuda. Two of his kids died. He says, Af she'ayu k'tanim b'nei shmona shanim, even though they were only eight years old. So don't ever say, oh no, no, this sin is only for Jews. No, Er Ve'onan were not Jews. This is before Matan Torah. Judaism was only born in Mount Sinai. Oh no, this sin is only for big people, only for adults. No, my friend, Er Ve'onan were eight years old. Akadosh Baruch who hates this sin so much, he killed him at eight years old. Now, even though eight years old was different back then than it is today, they were much more developed. Nonetheless, still, the Torah specifically mentions that they were only eight years old. Chazal mentions specifically eight years old to show you, to teach us, there's no age on this uh, on this uh, sin. Kadosh Baruch hates it in every in every aspect, and that's why the Zohar Kadosh says. This sin, whoever does it, doesn't matter what the age is, they get punished for it. Other sins a person makes before 13 years old are not even considered sins. Other sins the person makes between the age of 13 and 20, 13 and 20, he's already a, boy, a big boy, 13 and 20, HaKadosh Baruch has a lot of mercy on him. He only starts judging him 20 and after. Doesn't mean that below 20 he doesn't judge him. Meaning he has time for he gives him time before he starts punishing him. Gives him time. Gives him more time to do tshuva. This specific sin, he already gets punished already now. Based on this sin, this sin was the one thing that caused the flood. Noah's flood. Kadosh Baruch destroyed the entire world based on this sin. And b'shum avera mi shebore guf lemazikim ki averat v'gam abrit. There is no sin in the entire world that creates more demons than this sin. Than the wasting seed. Mishnah Pirkei Avot says, you make a mitzvah, you create yourself an angel. You make a sin, you create a prosecutor against you. The angel is your defender, the demon is your prosecutor. That's for one mitzvah. That means that your mitzvah creates something. You may not see it, but it creates something. You just uh, about to drink, you said uh, a blessing, you just created an angel. You had real kavanah, this angel is very strong. You made a little sin, you, you drank without a bracha, you created a demon. No, but the Chidayah says something different. He says this sin, there's no sin in the world, in the entire Torah, that makes more demons than this. Why? Because it's not one demon that's created. Every single seed that comes out of the person's body is an individual demon of its own. It's a prosecutor against you on its own. You're talking about hundreds of millions per one action. This person that just wasted seed, he's delaying the Mashiach. He's delaying the Mashiach. The whole world is waiting for Mashiach. Why? Because of you. Because you wanted to have a good time at 12 o'clock in the afternoon with yourself, with your girlfriend, with your this, with your that. The Mashiach is delayed again because of you. So don't start telling me, no, no, Mashiach, Mashiach, no, no, Mashiach. Stop, stop wasting seed. That'll be better. With all the songs. Because we see in the Gemara Masechet Yevamot, page 63, and also in Gemara Masechet Nida, page 13, Amud Bet, that Ben David, the Mashiach, is not going to come until all of the Neshamot that are, that are in a place called Guf, 
which is a spiritual world where all of the neshamot wait to come to this world until all of them are emptied from there. Mashiach is not coming. When a person wastes seed, they're creating neshamot, but no bodies. So what happens? They can't. They're not fulfilling their role. This creates a thicker shell on top of the soul of a person. And this is the biggest, uh, this causes the biggest anguish and pain to heaven and in all of the worlds that Hashem has and delays all of the salvation that Hashem wants to give to the world. And woe to him and to his un- misfortune and his lack of mazal if he doesn't do tshuva. Because after he dies, they're going to take account on him for everything. Every single time he did it. Every single time she led to it. She walked around. Somebody looked at her. She became an image. In some guy's head, he did it. Hashem Yirachem. She had a boyfriend. Hashem Yirachem. He had it. Oh, Hashem Yirachem. Every single time. Not sometimes, not when you were this, not when you were that, not when you were drunk, and not when you were high. Every single time. Milvad on show al etzem avera. Beuter yecharet charedak dola ki ata anachnu be'elef hashishi. He says, aside from the anguish that he will have on the sin itself, he'll even have a bigger pain, a bigger uh, sorrow over the fact that we are now in the 6,000. Meaning, he's not going to have a time to redo this. No more reincarnation, no more do, no more, no more second chance. This is your last chance. You're alive, your chance. Ve'u keneged yesod And this 6,000 is the yesod. It's the foundational thousandth year of creation meaning it's everybody's last chance, meaning it's the whole uh, purpose of this time in, in the world is to fix the foundation of Am Yisrael. What's the Yesod? The Brit. The Brit is the Yesod. You look at the Kabbalah, different uh, drawings of the uh, body with different things. It shows there's different parts of the body are called different things. The Yesod is the area of the sex organs. Umasava mikul kalim aru and his horrible actions are destroying this foundation. Here we see Rabotai Karim that Gamma Brit is not a Khumra, it's not a uh, stringency, it's not some mystical teaching unfounded and unheard of. This is the foundation of Judaism. This is the foundation. And a person that does not take the opportunity to fix this part of themselves is simply missing a chance of a lifetime. Because it's not easy and not cheap to fix it. Now the first thing that a person needs to do to fix this is understand that Every single addiction, no matter what it is, whether it's addi- addiction to immorality, addiction to promiscuity, an addiction to gambling, an addiction to drugs, an addiction to food, an addiction to anything, is simply, by definition, a desire, not a disease. The AAs of, and, and the likes will tell you that your addiction is a disease. Oh, you're, you're promiscuous? That's a disease. You're an alcoholic? That's a disease. You're a drug addict? That's a disease. You're sick. No, no, my friend. You're not sick. You have, an, you have an addiction that's a desire. What's the difference between desire and sickness? If you tell me that my addiction is a sickness, there's no cure. You can't go to CVS or Walgreens or the local pharmacy and say, yeah, listen, I got a sex addiction. Do you have any, anything over the counter I can take to stop it? There's no, there's no cure. 
Ah, I have a food addiction. Can you, uh, I can't stop eating. Can you give me a pill, maybe an Advil or two? It's going to stop me from eating? No, my friend. If it's a disease, there's no cure. That means that you're going to be self, uh, you know, just miserable, horrible, and it's just going to get worse. You might as well just leave this world. But if it's a desire, that means it's within your power to overcome it. Regardless of how strong this desire is. I got a student that used to be addicted to drugs. Very, very heavy drugs. The heaviest there are. I spoke to him four years ago, explained to him exactly what I'm telling you now, four, maybe five years ago. Explained to him everything that I told you. Baruch Hashem, he took it even further. And Baruch Hashem today is as clean as can be. And he's now teaching other people how to overcome this desire. How to overcome this desire, not this sickness. There are several people that I know that have addiction to food. One person found, found out from their doctor that if they continue eating the way that they're eating, they're probably not going to finish the year. Suddenly the desire was under control. Suddenly the desire became a desire, not an addiction, not a uh, disease. He thought he was sick. He thought he couldn't stop eating until the doctor said you're going to die. And all of a sudden the, the sickness became a desire. Sometimes you need to get scared to death in order to realize it's just a desire. It's not a, it's not a sickness. The Rambam writes that the strongest desire on a human being is a desire, the addiction to the desire of immorality, of wasting seed. Strongest desire. Why? That's the only reason the body exists for this purpose. If it wasn't for us having a mitzvah of procreation, HaKadosh Baruch Hu would simply not have any bodies. There's no point for the body. That's the point of the body. The woman's point of her, her body is to have babies. And the, and the male, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, his part is to bring the seed that's going to help create the baby. That's it. Other than that, there's no purpose for the body. Every other mitzvah HaKadosh Baruch Hu could do, could do without it. Meaning the Rambam writes, this desire is in essence, it's part of the reason of why, why you have a body. Hence the reason why it's so addictive. But the difference between us and animals is we have to be able to control our desires. You don't control your desire, because who says you're an animal. So every single time a person sins in this situation, they have a very, very serious problem. Most critical is that they're destroying their mazal. She walks around immodest, she likes to wear things that are really tight or things that don't cover her whole body and the likes. She is destroying her mazal. Even if she finds a husband, it's not going to be the best. It's going to be like one of those, uh, I wish I never met him. It's going to be like one of those people who's like, ah, I can't believe I was married to that guy. Yeah, but you're beautiful. He's beautiful. Everything is beautiful. Yeah, everything is beautiful on the outside. Like the celebrities, everything is beautiful on the outside, inside rotten. If a person is not doing tshuva for this ish, for this sin, his mazal is gone. The guy can get a job making a hundred thousand a month. Hundred thousand a month is a lot of money. Should be fine. You should be good. You should have everything you want. You don't fix this. You have 100000 a month and you have nothing at the same time. Why? You see. You see in the world. Highest suicide rates, according to the U.S. government, is among the upper class, among the rich people, among the people that make more than 100000 a month. Over 70% of suicides are by the rich people. Over 70%. We talk about a, a, a ridiculous number. If you say, oh, 50, 50, 50, okay, you know, whatever. No, no, no. Over 70% are by rich people. How many celebrities kill themselves every single year of every overdose, intentional and unintentional? How many people are going to clinics for depression, for anxiety? They made a multi billion dollar industry to help people not kill themselves because they're depressed. Oh, I'm alone. What do you mean? You're married with five kids. I feel alone. Why do you feel alone? What's the matter with you? 
I feel like I have nothing. What do you mean nothing? Last I checked your bank account, you have more money. The bank said uh, you should open a bank. What do you mean you have nothing? The bank is borrowing money from you. What do you mean you have nothing? I feel I have nothing. Why? You're making all this money because you don't have mazal. The real blessing you don't have, you're missing it. The money's going to the wrong places. The feelings are going to the wrong places. Hashem is giving you all the things that make you look good. But unfortunately, you cannot enjoy it. Every year they report the deaths of who died in the last year, secular year, on the who's who's list. You know, the celebrities, the billionaires, and so on. And when you find out more about these people's lives, like there's one billionaire that died maybe six months ago, this guy Koch, David Koch, had more money than, he, than you can count. One of the Forbes 500, probably 40, 50, 60 billion dollars, died. You read the details of this person's life, you say, I think it's better than being gay, no. You go, you look at some of these celebrities' lives, celebrity lives that, you know, they kill themselves, they die, whatever it was. You look at the details of their life. I'm not saying how many houses they have. Well, they can't take the house to, 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 to the next world. I'm not saying how much money they have and, and the buildings. I'm talking about their real life. What are they going to be remembered for? No one's going to remember you for a building you built. No one cares. No one's going to remember you that you, you invented some car. No one cares. What good did you produce in the world? You see what good? Nightmare of a life. One after another. Why? HaKadosh Baruch Hu makes it where the, the Shefa comes, but not to where it's supposed to. Not where it's supposed to. So this is an auspicious time to do tshuva. Now, the good news is, if a person does tshuva, serious tshuva for Pgamabrit, serious tshuva for immodesty, serious tshuva for immorality, they can get to the level of Ruach HaKodesh. And I'll prove it to you. What's tshuva? Tshuva is rabotai. First, stop. First, stop. Stop being promiscuous. Stop being immoral. With yourself or with other people. Watch your eyes. Don't even look at yourself. A person should never look at themselves naked, male or female. Never. You don't need to look at yourself. What are you checking? If it's still there, if it wasn't there, I promise you, you'll know. There's no reason for you to ever look at yourself. Watching your eyes and not looking at the immodest woman, that's a given, that's obvious. You have to be, uh, you know, in special light for me to explain that to you. That's a given. Of course you have to watch your eyes and not look at women. I'm talking about not looking at yourself. That's how watching your eyes means. Watching your eyes means don't look at yourself. You go take a shower, you don't, you don't look. You just, you do whatever you got to do. A sponge, don't touch, don't look, nothing. Why? Kodesh, don't touch, don't look, nothing. Don't be comfortable with yourself. That's number one. Male or female. I know females will even have a bigger problem than this because they love to look at themselves, but don't look at yourself. There's no need. If it's for medicinal reasons, health reasons, things like that, obviously, is an issue. You have to do what you got to do. But I'm talking about on a regular basis when it's unnecessary. Don't be so comfortable with your nakedness. That's number one. Number two, don't look at other people. If your local mikveh has a bunch of people thinking that they're in Rome and Greece, walking around naked, don't go there anymore. The Sefer Hasidim says places like that create more demons than mitzvot. Many of these mikveys, people think that they're in Rome and Greece. They walk around naked just because it's all guys and all girls. No, chas v'shalom. You're in a mikveh, there's other people walking around naked, you leave. Why? You're not allowed to look at them either. Yeah, but I'm a guy, I'm not, I'm not attracted, it doesn't make a difference. You're never allowed to, to, to look at another guy. In fact, Allah Shukhan Aruch says, a boy is not allowed to look at his own father. A boy is not allowed to look at his own father. Needless to say, I'm a stranger. That's halakha. You also find that in Yakut Yosef. Now, why? Modesty, Rabotai, is not just how, what clothes you wear. It's where your eyes go. Then after you've watched your eyes, 
you're not watching any of this filth on the internet or on televisions and on phones and whatever else other tools that the satan uses sometimes you watch your eyes you stop the action you have a girlfriend you break up or you get married right away one or the other whatever comes first you're not ready to get married okay goodbye why every single day you're with her you have a very serious problem with a Baruch Hu. Whatever blessing a Baruch Hu wants to give you, you're destroying it. Yeah, but we're not touching. For now. For now. Next, a person needs to learn about this topic and become an expert in it. That's part of the tikkun itself. We have over 70 shiurim about this topic. Long and short, and there's Baruch Hashem. A uh, CD coming out and a USB coming out with all of those teachings. You can get it on the internet for free. You can get the CDs when they're out finally, Bezal Hashem. Point being is that every time somebody sends me the questions, oh, I have a problem. I already know what the problem is. I got to talk to you. There's no need to talk to you. I'll just send you the playlist. No need to talk. Don't embarrass yourself. I already know. Don't worry. It's okay. You're not the only one. I got a thousand others like you every day. Nothing embarrassing. Oh, I thought I was the only one. I wish Shabbat Shimon Mashiach would be here. If you were the only one. I'd come to your house and help you. Teach you every Allah and under the sun. You're finished but within a week. You're the biggest tzaddik in the world. If it was one. Unfortunately, it's an epidemic. So first you've got to stop. Then you've got to learn. you got to learn everything you got to learn. All of these shoes, you got to become an expert in it. Don't listen to it like it's music. Listen to it like it's the, the most important thing in the world. Become kadosh. Sanctify yourself. Kadosh, Kadosh, what Kadosh means? Kadosh means your eyes, your mind, your ears, your everything only thinks about HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You cannot think about HaKadosh Baruch Hu if you're constantly wasting seeds. Not possible. You cannot think about HaKadosh Baruch Hu if your eyes are constantly looking at pornography or immodesty or PG-13 movies and not 13 movies and rated R movies and gay and no movies. You cannot watch your eyes as long as your eyes go where they shouldn't go. You cannot watch your eyes, whether you're a guy or a girl. You cannot think about HaKadosh Baruch Hu that way. You have to make yourself kadosh. You have to help other people. It's the next step. You have to take these CDs, you have to take these shurim, and you have to spread them everywhere you possibly can. Why? You have to get other people to do tshuva to make up for the crimes you've already made because you can't stop what you already did. You can stop future, but you got to get other people to stop. Best way to get other people to stop is don't do it yourself. Let me do it. Why? I'm an expert. You have to understand the situation of a person that's wasting seed or has wasted seed without tshuva is a dire situation. What is it like? It's like somebody that's on a lifeline. He's on borrowed time. Every day he survives is a miracle. That's a person that's currently wasting seed. Every single day he stays alive is a miracle. Miracle, my much miracle. Why? Because the Kadosh Baruch Hu, you did it one time in your life. The Kadosh Baruch Hu says death penalty. Death penalty. That's what Kadosh Baruch Hu says. You did it five times a week, five times a month, five times a day. Hashem niachem alenu. Every single day, a person's alive is a death penalty. So what, what's 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 going? Oh, it's, it's a miracle. It's supposed to be a death penalty. So what happens? You have to fix it. So now, how you fix it? Don't take any unnecessary risks. Don't try to tell other people things that you're not an expert in. First, you got to learn it, and then you also got to help them do it. How? You give them a CD. Because if you have an opportunity, Hashem gave you the blessing, He gave you a friend, a classmate, or whatever, that doesn't know what's going on, and you don't, and, and He's giving you an opportunity to help somebody. And you have two choices. You can either give him a CD or give him a lecture, or I can talk to him. And you decide to be a superhero and start talking to him, and He doesn't like your tone. He thinks you're judging him. He thinks you're, uh, you're, you're, you're criticizing him. He doesn't do it. You just missed out on the neshama. This person is not going to do tshuva. You missed out on an opportunity to fix yourself. Now you need a bunch of those guys. You can't just get, think, oh, one guy helped him do tshuva, I finished everything. No, no, you have, to, you have to get a lot of people to do tshuva. So what do you do? You give him one of these CDs, you send a shiurim, you give him the playlist. You make sure that you give him something that works. This works. How do I know? I know. If it didn't work, trust me, I wouldn't get all the phone calls that I get. And the people that do it, Rabotai Karim, the people that do it, they're the happiest people in the world. Go look at the comments. Some of the people were uh, 
so happy they made public, they wrote public letters on our website, on our YouTube page, in different places of how it's changed their life. Jews, non-Jews, male, female, changed their life. So you have to help people do tshuva. Last but not least, you have to do tikkunim, which we talked about recently. Tikkuni means every single time a person has sinned, he has to give a certain amount of tzedakah. Why? Because this is this tshuva is supposed to hurt. Just like you killed a neshama or neshamot, Kadosh Baruch Hu says you have to give something in replacement. Money is dami. Money is considered like life. So this tikkun is, is painful. Now, if you have, you give. You don't have, you don't give. Obviously Hashem is all not expecting you to do something you can't do. He's not giving you a mitzvah to fly in the air. Why? Because he knows you can't fly. He's not giving you a mitzvah to, uh, to give a billion dollars and you're homeless. Obviously, he knows that you're homeless. So that's the... But if you can give, you give. Problem is, a lot of people, they have, but they don't want to give. Why? They're looking for another way. Can I do it another way? Is there something else that I can do instead of money? Can I just fast? Yeah, go ahead, fast. 84 times for every single time. By the time you finish the first fast, you're going to die. No, I'm going to fast for three days in a row. Go ahead, Mabruk. Go. Five days in a row. Go. Go. I'll come to your, uh, to your uh, yacht site. I'll visit your yacht site. There's no one in this generation. There's no one in this generation. Not even the tzaddikim that could do the amount of fast that an average teenager is supposed to do. No one. Meaning the only way to fix this is money. Every single time a person is trying something else, this, that, the other thing, simply what they're doing is they're being penny-wise, dollar-foolish. They're trying to save a few pennies by wasting a bunch of dollars on other things. Don't be a chachmolog. Don't be a overly smart with Hashem. Simply, if Hashem gave you a blessing, do what you got to do. You don't want to do it? My boy, go do what you got to do. Again, I keep telling people, this is not a money-maker. This is for people. This is for people. One thing I can tell you is that every single person that takes the advice of HaKadosh Baruch Hu always wins. Always wins. But unfortunately, people have a hard heart and they don't want to listen.